I'm here to introduce Jeremy Zuidema, founding principal at Arc Chimera Architects, who will present 439 West 36th Street, as well as 49-501 9th Avenue. Enjoy. Thanks. I'm presenting our three buildings that won the Building of Excellence Award from NYSERDA in recognition of their ultra-low energy design as the first pastel projects for the Hudson Yards area of Manhattan. The site, Hudson Yards North, is located immediately above the new skyscrapers that define Hudson Yards. Midtown lies to the east, with major bus and rail transport hubs nearby. Unlike the surrounding context, the blocks of Hudson Yards North are marred by the Lincoln Tunnel infrastructure carved out of it, resulting in a heavily trafficked, relatively lightly developed neighborhood. These three buildings are located across two sites. Two buildings are corner sites that face 9th Avenue and back onto the Lincoln Tunnel entry. The third is an infill site on West 36th Street, near where the tunnel exit meets the city grid. We pushed for passive house early on in this project, which the client was quick to embrace, as this would not only be appropriate from a macro environmental standpoint, but would also impart many micro environmental benefits for these particular sites. A healthy, quiet, and comfortable environment for one for the end user is a valuable sales pitch when your neighborhood is one of the most heavily trafficked areas of Manhattan. Both of these sites fall under a content contextual zoning district, which limits the permitted height and dictates specific setback requirements. Working within this framework, the 36th Street site was configured to orientate itself away from the heavily trafficked tunnel exit and provide views, particularly for the upper units towards the river and the, and the new Hudson Yards development. In plan, this meant pushing the cords to, to the easterly side of the site with union arrangements organized efficiently around. This also allowed for a maximum commercial footprint at the ground floor. At the setback floors, a permitted dormer extends the building to the street line at the southeast and reduces at each floor in accordance with the permitted zoning envelope resulting in the tiered massing. This massing informed a cladding design that is expressive of this gradual stepping with projecting vertical fins that curve to become horizontal at the res respective terminating floors. In addition to the aesthetic expression, these fins also provide passive shading to the windows and reinforce the idea, even at the lower floors, of orienting the views toward the west. Looking at the facade in greater detail, the cladding is a composition of ultra-high density precast panels, or UHPC in short, with metal infill and metal spandrels. The panels are organized in a double height stagger pattern, which reinforces the tiered massing and produces a tectonic logic for the cladding. A slight tonal differentiation in the cladding delineated the setback portion from that of the street. The two buildings at 9th Avenue have a very different contextual relationship as both buildings occupy a corner site with the sunken tunnel entry at the rear, making every elevation visible from the street. On 9th Avenue, we wanted to be respectful of the existing building, which in order to use up all the floor area available is being cantilevered over. To that end, we stepped the street wall up from the middle with the greater bulk located at the corners. At the back of the building, we opened up two courtyards to provide light and air to, the, to all the residential units, which also opened up the opportunity to introduce daylight into the cellar spaces. As the contextual zoning required setbacks, we worked within these parameters to inform a massing that is broken up through subtle changes in the street wall, as is further expressed in the cladding articulation. In plan, each building has a double height lobby and a recessed entry off the side street. This gives a resident residential entry that is both generous and formal, but also expresses its semi-private nature. Pushing the residential entry to the side street allows the 9th Avenue frontage to be fully dedicated to commercial uses, adding more light to this stretch of 9th Avenue. As we move up through the residential floors, we can see how the courtyard serves to give light, air, and views to the rear-facing units, but also open up the elevator lobbies to receive natural daylight as well. The buildings take advantage of the unique setting to provide generous curved windows, windows at the corner, thereby opening up expansive views for many of the units. The curved corners represent a softening of the building form, which is picked up in a cladding expression of subtly fluted, repeating vertical elements bisected by stronger horizontal Sometimes these are simple floor delineators where the slope helps to express the vertical fluting. Also where they become a stronger datum, either forming a horizontal articulation on the facade or projecting deeper to become a balcony. Like our 36th Street building, these two buildings are also clad in UHPC panels. Subtle variations of the cladding tone differentiates the various forms as expressed in the earlier massing slide. In addition to providing spectacular views, the curved windows also open up the opportunity to have more generous balconies within the limited projection permitted over the property line in New York City. Both buildings benefit from a shading strategy integrated into the cladding design, whereas 9th Avenue utilized balconies and horizontal articula 
installation to provide shading to a significant percentage of the windows, 36 tree achieves this through both the vertical fins discussed earlier and horizontal sunshade that forms part of the window system. In order to maintain the continuity of insulation, both buildings utilize concrete thermal breaks in the balcony construction and in the upstands at roofs. With the upstands, it's particularly beneficial in maintaining the continuity of insulation while also providing a simple fixing zone for the parapet cladding and railing without having to worry about artic additional roof penetrations. The facade in all three buildings will be built using a panelized construction system where the cladding, windows, and insulation all arrive on site as a single prefabricated unit. UHPC has exceptional strength and density, meaning a typical 10 foot by 10 foot panel only requires four points of fixing, minimizing the amount of thermal bridging. The properties of UHPC itself allows it to act as water and air barrier for the building. The strength of UHPC allows it to support the window and all required design loads without the need for a structural backup wall. In detailing, we had to carefully consider the joints between panels, a keyed panel design, vertical joint system, and sufficient seal to ensure there is a positive drainage route and multiple lines of protection. The placement of the windows within the panel was carefully considered to balance the requirement for the cladding to support the windows while providing sufficient thermal continuity with the insulation. Both buildings utilize air source heat pumps for heating and cooling, allowing every unit to have control of their own conditioned space. In 36th Street, Hot water is provided through individual heat pumps, water heaters in each unit. In the Ninth Avenue buildings, hot water is through communal heat pumps, water heaters with storage tanks in the Mikado bulkheads. All the buildings utilize energy recovery in the ventilation system. There are a number of challenges we had to overcome to achieve both passive house design these projects, but we, but we believe the main takeaway is that if passive house can be achieved on complex sites like these, there's no reason it cannot be replicated across the city. We equally believe that achieving passive house does not need to mean sacrificing well-considered design in the pursuit of performance. We look forward to seeing these three buildings come to fruition over the next couple of years and the transformation in concert with other developments happening in the neighborhood that they will collectively have on the area, both urbanistically and in inspiring a new crop of high-performance buildings. Thank you. Thanks, Jeremy. That was fantastic.